I've been thinking of this as the first time we've put together the spatial detail on deforestation rates at, with the spatial detail of biomass, but you make the point that we're not quite there yet. So tell me again how, how you see it. You, we've put together the fine spatial detail for biomass now, but we're still, we still have not really uh, integrated it with a spatially def highly defined rates of forest change, let's say. So, so you haven't made the final step, but at least we're ready in terms of the biomass map. I guess is that way to put it. Is that the way you would? Uh, yes, I think that uh, for for the first time we had uh, the possibility to to generate a um, uh, sort of medium resolution carbon stock. Uh, data set that provide information on how much carbon is stored in the vegetation uh, all over the tropics. The uh, new aspect of this data set is that actually for the first time is uh, consistent over uh, space and over time. Uh, this is di different from uh, previous estimates that they um, usually are based on existing forest in inventories and uh, one of the limitations of existing forest inventory inventories for the tropics is that uh, unfortunately quite often they are obsolete uh, because uh, tropical countries they don't have enough resources to implement new forest inventories and uh, quite often they were mainly um, try to estimate the, the uh, commercial value of the timber. So they were not really providing a comprehensive um, uh, sample of what the carbon stock was on the, on the ground. By using a combination of um, specifically design uh, field data collection and uh, a series of sat satellite data, well, we solve this problem uh, because uh, satellite data, uh, thanks to the fact that it's continuous in, 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 in space, is providing a very comprehensive um, estimate of how much carbon is uh, on, the, on, on the vegetation. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is only one, one aspect, uh, one, um, one t um, data set that we need in order to uh, improve and better understand the carbon cycle. Um, as, as, as you mentioned, yes, uh, the next step is really try to combine this data set with uh, high resolution information on uh, land cover change. So that will allow us to properly assign a, a value of carbon stock to the forest that um, is is lost, mm -hmm. and this is different from what uh, it is possible to do um, until now. Because until now, what we use is only an average value of carbon stock stored in the vegetation. Yeah. We don't. We are not really able to assign the specific value of that specific stand of forest that has been removed. And so, uh, by having a a spatial data set of carbon stock and being able to combine with the deforestation map, well, you are able to, ass to assign um, the appropriate value of carbon to the, fo the forest that has, has, has been lost. And, um, and I hope that this is going to help your work uh, that is um, focusing more on the, on the fluxes of yeah. how are your result? How do your results compare with what's come before? Besides higher spatial resolution in terms of actual numbers, are you higher or lower or just the same? Um, right, it is interesting to see that um, as, as a result of, of the study, we see that uh, uh, the result indicates that the total amount of above ground carbon stored in the uh, woody vegetation in the tropics is actually much higher than we previously knew. Um, if we compare our result with uh, prob probably the most comprehensive data set uh, ex ex existing so far on carbon stock, that is a data set published by the Food and Agriculture Organization of UN uh, under their Forest Resource and Assessment Project, uh, we see that we 
we uh, report a 40, 41% more carbon stored in the vegetation. Wow. This is uh, com compared with the um, Forest Resource and Assessment 2005. And, um, and just to give you a sense of the uncertainties that are out there in the estimate of carbon stock until now, um, if only recently FAO pu published the um, new estimate based on the Forest Resource Assessment 2010, and it is interesting to notice that for many, many countries, they revised the numbers and all the estimates are much higher than the Forest Resource Assessment 2005. So, this is really uh, a, um, pointing out a, a big question, how, uh, um, what is the, the, the methodology, how reliable is the methodology that we have been using until now. Um, and so with um, this new work with the data set that is based on consistent uh, remote sensing observation, we are really hoping to reduce the uncertainties yeah. on, uh, on the so estimate. The, for, for MRV, which is monitoring, uh, reporting and verification of carbon fluxes, it's, it's vital everyone will understand how a better estimate of emissions contributes to better MRV for such things as red. It, it's also, from a more scientific point of view, having better estimates of carbon emissions from tropical lands will put a tighter constraint on the understanding of the whole global carbon cycle, for example. Are the natural sinks continuing to increase as in proportion to emissions? Or are they beginning to saturate and maybe lose their strength, which is, which of, which is a vital to understand whether the carbon cycle is continuing to work sort of in a favorable way to the human enterprise or whether it's going to get tougher to uh, manage carbon.